Hey everybody, I um, wanted to just do a quick video today on notifiers. Um, so if you look in your uh, programming or your functions palette in the programming section under synchronization, you've got notifier operations. So this is where you're going to find all of your notifier functions. Um, so we, I did a previous video on queues. Um, notifiers are really similar to queues. Um, the main difference is just that your queue is going to buffer data for you, right? So I can put data into a queue and it, I can extract data basically in like a first in, first out order. Um, so that way I can keep like a history of everything that's been put into the queue. I can make sure that everything gets out. Um, notifiers are a little different in that they're basically like a latest value, right? So I can write to a notifier um, when I go to basically read a notification, rather than getting this like history of everything that's ever been written, I get the latest notification, which a lot of times is all you need. Um, now, if you're needing like to make sure you read every value, you definitely want to make sure you're using like cues. Um, but if you just want to be able to check stuff every now and then to get like a latest value, notifiers are fantastic. So I'm going to set up just a simple example here. Um, so let's just set up a while loop and I'm going to have it generate a random number and I'm just going to create a little indicator for that and let's add a stop button there and we're going to add just a little weight so this isn't uh, spinning out of control. So yeah, we've got uh, now just like a simple little bit of code. Um, all this is doing is generating a random number over and over and over again. So let's say I have separate processes in my code, maybe different parallel loops or asynchronous processes that need access to the latest value of this random number. Now, not super meaningful for a random number, but let's say this is a data acquisition task, right? And I'm configuring the task here reading the or writing to the notifier here and then closing it out here well you know maybe this task is running continuously but i have different processes that want to check hey the latest value in that data acquisition task like hey has the temperature reached this yet you know i don't care about the whole history of all the temperature data maybe we're logging that somewhere or something but i just want to check the latest value notifiers are a great way to do that so we're going to first drop an obtain notifier and this is the same as like you know obtaining a queue um, you can use named notifiers. I never really do, but you can name them. Um, and then we can define an element data type. So this is the only required field. Um, you can wire that in. Now we've defined the type of this notifier. So I can run that through. Um, and then we're going to use the send notification function, uh, which is basically going to send a notification to anyone that's listening. It doesn't care if anyone's waiting for a notification or not, um, we're just gonna send it out. Um, and then we're just gonna add a simple uh, release notifier when we're done, which is basically just going to, um, yeah, clear up this, uh, you know, kind of delete the notifier from memory, um, free that up. So yeah, here's our basic structure on the writer side. Um, so yeah, we're just creating that. We're writing notifications over and over again, and then we are destroying that when we're done. So just to show you before we start reading that different places, let's just run this. So you can see we're getting our random numbers in, just like you'd expect. Okay, now let's go create one more loop down here. Um, and we're going to branch this notifier reference here. So now I'm going to use this wait on notification function um, and wire that reference in. So again, this is going to wait until we get a notification. So it's gonna um, check to see, yeah, just uh, almost like, right, if you have a queue and you're using the DQ function um, and there is a timeout here as well, right? So it's gonna basically halt execution until something's available and then act on that. So we're going to wait for a notifier and then um, we're going to output that value. So um, I can just drop a simple graph or let's do a chart, not a graph, sorry. Um, so yeah, let's drop that down. 
Um, there is also this little flag here, which is ignore previous. So this allows you to ignore previous notifications. You can either set it to true or false. It is false by default. Um, so yeah, we've got that. And then I'm just gonna, obviously not the most elegant shutdown mechanism, but just a way to shut down my asynchronous loop. So let's go run this and see what happens. So you can see as this updates, this is also updating. Um, the way this is designed though, I really am getting like basically every data point through, which isn't necessarily the goal of notifiers usually, um, but you could use it like this. Um, so yeah, let's add another loop to this. Um, so yeah, let's add one more down here. And let's branch this notifier one more time. And I'm going to, again, add the um, wait on notification function. Um, and I'm also going to copy this graph. So we're going to have two separate graphs. Um, but this one, I'm going to have it read that every two seconds. So this one is getting data as soon as a new notification gets sent, which is every 150 milliseconds. This one, instead, I'm just gonna have wait on a notification every 2,000 milliseconds. Um, and yeah, let's wire that down. So basically doing the same thing, just highlighting, we don't need to read every value that's getting sent to the notifier. We can just read the ones we care about. So um, let's clear these real quick just so you can see a little better. Yeah, so let's run this. So you can see our uh, one graph is getting basically every data point, whereas this one is only getting a value every two seconds. So um, yeah, we can pull data when we want it and we can basically ignore the notifications when we don't care, right? So really useful in that way to just get the latest value of something. Um, so let's stop this. Um, yeah, there's just a couple other functions I wanted to talk about really quick in the notifier palettes. Um, so first one, let's look at this get notifier status. So this one is useful. Um, it's basically going to give you details about the notifier. So I can see, um, as you can see in the context help here, I can see what the last notification was um, as long as it wasn't canceled, which I'll talk about in a sec. And you can also see how many different uh, places in your code are waiting on that notifier right now, right? So if both of these were waiting on a notification at the same time, I would see two there when I run this, right? Or zero if nobody's waiting. So I can actually check how many people are waiting on notifications at any given moment, which is handy sometimes. And this is also useful if you ever just wanna know what the latest notification is. If, you have an, if you've named this, this notifier, you also can pull the name out. So there's that. Um, there is also a cancel notification, which basically is a way to uh, erase the current uh, message in your notifier, right? So if I send a value and I wanna like clear that out for whatever reason, I can, and it makes it no longer pullable, right? So if I go use get notifier status and try to pull out the latest notification, it's gonna return nothing. Um, because it was canceled. So, or it'll return the last one that wasn't canceled, if that makes any sense. Um, so, um, yeah, so cancels there. I don't really use this much, um, but I use the get notifier status a lot. Um, we looked at the wait on notification. There is also a wait on notification from multiple. So you can wait on a whole bunch of notifiers. Um, so, right, if I had you know, maybe two things writing to notifiers, I could actually be waiting on both of those. Um, so that works as well. And then there is this advanced, um, which also gives you some other kind of details and whatnot um, with some notifier history functions and stuff like that. So uh, works similarly though. Um, but yeah, um, this is, uh, I think if you're really trying to get a hold on notifiers, just focus on the obtain notifier, send notification, wait on notification, get notifier status, and release notifier. I think those are the ones that you're gonna be using 99% of the time. The other ones fall into place sometimes. So, um, so yeah, 
Um, that's basically notifiers, right? Just a way for you to share the latest data um, to anything, right? No one could be listening or you could have hundreds of things all waiting on notifications. So it's just a great way to broadcast um, the latest value of something across your software. Um, in this example, we have three separate loops that are all sharing that notifier. It doesn't have to be all on a single VI either. So I could have um, asynchronous components, different sub VIs that are all pulling notifier values and whatnot as well. So um, yeah, that's kind of a uh, crash course on notifiers. I hope that was helpful. Canon Controls is your gateway to mastering LabVIEW. Dive into programming for data acquisition, industrial communications, and manufacturing automation. Explore how to enhance your projects with cybersecurity best practices. Join the journey to elevate your skills and secure your systems with every episode.